Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'd uh, like to yield myself uh, such time as I may consume. General is recognized. Um, I rise to offer an amendment to H.R. 10, which authorizes our nation's, uh, uh, reauthorizes our nation's charter school program. And I'd just like to start out by saying this is a, a great improvement over the charter school legislation we have seen in past times. Um, when the charter school movement uh, began, uh, as many of you may recall, lawmakers exempted those schools from many of the rules governing traditional public schools in order to allow educators uh, to, uh, their ability to explore new innovative methods and models of teaching. Well, this, um, uh, this yielding of, um, of, uh, of uh, exempting them from this rules yielded some unintended consequences. Uh, there have been stories in many states, and you just heard uh, Ms. Castor of Florida talk about um, financial waste, fraud, murky funders or managers, conflicts of interest, and it's a problem notwithstanding um, uh, our uh, desire to see innovation. Um, this has got to be addressed because taxpayer dollars are in fact lost along with private funds as well as innovation. Uh, and the greatest cost, of course, is our children um, who uh, become sometimes puppets of other folks' uh, um, financial interests. A new report from the Center of uh, Popular Democracy and Integrity in Education released just this month examined 15 of the largest charter markets and found $100 million in losses to taxpayers since charter schools uh, entered these markets. Um, it's very important to put sensible oversight into place to ensure that public funds are not being wasted or misused. And this amendment does just that. It simply requires that states receiving charter school grants must set aside 2% of that grant to provide financial oversight of charters of publicly funded money and to disclose private contributions that they receive. Um, I just want to say, uh, anticipating some rebuttal, um, uh, that the funds would be set aside and, and the authority authorizing agencies uh, of these charter schools, be they the state or the local education agency, uh, would be able to, to use the set aside for uh, appropriate financial oversight. Uh, and with that, I would reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves her time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Minnesota seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I rise to claim time in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This amendment. <clears throat> Well, four states, four states to reserve more funds for review of public and private charter school funding. The underlying bill, Mr. Chairman, includes audits as an important aspect of quality authorizing measures. In addition, states already require multiple audits of their charter schools. This amendment will take money away from the quality authorizing set aside where funds will otherwise be used to support measures to open and run schools with effective operations practices in addition to high quality academics. Mr. Chairman, I urge colleagues to oppose this amendment and I reserve the balance of my time. The, the gentleman, gentleman from yield. Minnesota reserves. The gentlelady from Wisconsin is recognized. The gentleman yield. Uh, happy to yield. I, I thank the gentleman for yielding. And unfortunately, I, I too oppose this legislation. My, uh, this amendment of my good friend, Ms. Moore, uh, uh, for the, same, the reasons that the chairman has just said, that we believe that much of this is already taken care of in the underlying bill and that we are directing money away from the program for responsibilities that should, in fact, be the responsibility of the authorizers, uh, be they the state or, or local uh, authorizers. That, that is their job. We're trying to strengthen that uh, in this legislation to lead to high quality uh, author, uh, uh, expansion of these programs with the, uh, with the caveat being that you can only authorize those high quality programs with the question of accountability uh, and so forth. So I too uh, find myself in the unfortunate position of opposing my friend on this, uh, on this legislation and uh, expect the states uh, in response to uh, continuing to receive these grants to step up to their responsibility to deal, these, uh, deal with these problems. 
gentleman yields back. The gentlelady from Wisconsin is recognized. The gentlelady has two and a quarter minutes remaining. And thank, and thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And I think it's unfortunate that the gentleman from California is opposing this amendment as well. Um, and my Republican friends opposing it because we are often, uh, we find ourselves talking about unfunded mandates. And what my amendment does is try to make sure that we are providing uh, not only the guidance and insistence that there be audits, but that we actually provide the ways and means for it to be done. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to audit themselves. With what? Audits cost money. Uh, so I find it unfortunate um, that they would pass this unfunded mandate uh, on to these chartering agencies. Uh, and so I would urge my colleagues uh, to vote for this amendment. I think it improves the bill. Uh, and I think it provides the needed resources uh, for this accountability, these accountability activities. And with that, I would yield back the balance of my time. The gentlelady yields back the balance of her time. The